Hello beautiful ladies or whoever is watching this video. My name is Miss Realist Realist. I am a motivational speaker and I am a 20 year old virgin and I'm also a domestic violence survivor as well and I speak both about abuse and idolatry, how those two coincide and I also speak about virginity's value. Now, today I'm just going to give you a sneak peek into one of the segments from Virginity's Value, and that is pornography and virginity. As I was just telling my story of how I got addicted to pornography while I was a virgin. Now, I know you never heard that before, but I just want to be really real and allow you ladies to recognize what is important. What's important is becoming a Proverbs 31 woman. And just being a virgin, I'm like, oh, I got it all together. I'm a virgin. I ain't never had sex. But what are you doing? Are you masturbating? Are you watching pornography? I want to tell you how I got into it anyway. Well, the devil started subtly with me because at first I was on the social media website. I popped on somebody's profile and there was somebody doing it. And I was like, wow, that's how they do it. Because, you know, I you know, I had no clue which hole went where. And um, I was in the front of her, so I'm like, oh, that's very interesting. I never, yeah, I don't even know. I even know that went down, but okay. Um, Because sex to me was like intense kissing. That's all I thought it was. But anyway, so as I grew older, when I was in high school, these, I used to have friends that were guys. You have to watch who are in your circle. You really do have to watch who are in your circle. Because you get some crazy people that can have you put your mind in a negative, sinful direction that you don't want to be in. So, dudes making fun of me. Oh, you're a virgin, man. You're a virgin. How are you going to please your husband? Because you don't know how to do anything. And I did sit back and I was like, man. I sure don't know how to do nothing. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know the holes. I don't know the positions. Um, I'm pretty much lost on everything. I don't know what to do. And I was thinking, what happened if I am horrible? So what did I do? I started watching porn. Yeah, I started watching it because it was kind of like an educational thing for me. And so then I just looked at the regular way to have sex. Then after that, I started getting deeper into deeper. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. And you know like how they say curiosity kills the cat. Slowly but surely, my spirit was being diminished. Because, I mean, I wasn't spending much time with God. I was more on the computer looking at porn and saying, wow. For real, that's what people do? Click it. Click it, click it, click it. That's what people do. And you have to watch pornography because you're opening your heart, you're opening your spirit to lustful spirits, which comes, you know, homo homosexuality, you know, you, you think of doing orgies, they have bestiality with all this pornography. And you're putting this in your spirit, and your spirit was not meant for that. This is God's how You are the temple. So let's get into this right quick. Okay, 1 John 2, 16 says, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. I'm over here having lust of the flesh because when I'm looking at myself, I was like, oh, I don't want my husband to do this to me. I don't want him to do that. Oh, snap. Da, 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 da. I'm looking less of the eyes. I'm fantasizing. I'm like, oh, I want him. I want my husband to do this. I want him to do this and everything. Oh, snap. Yes. You know? And I was like, the reason I was looking at porn anyway was because of pride. I didn't want people to think that I couldn't please my husband when I got him just because I was a virgin. And what is this? This is of the world. This isn't of Christ. And thus, I had to rededicate my life to Christ because I became disfirmed from him and I was dying. 
In Matthew 5, 28, it says, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery within his heart. And I was a woman looking at men. And, you know, I was looking at them lustfully because I never got jumped on and nobody ever, and I never jumped on somebody else. I was like, man, oh, that's going to happen to me. And so I'm lusting, I'm lusting, I'm lusting. But what is adultery? It's voluntary sexual intercourse between married, between a married person and a person who is not his or her spouse. Now, we are supposed to be the bride of Christ, and I'm over here cheating with pornography. That's what I'm doing. I'm cheating with pornography. In 2 Corinthians 11, 2, it says, For I am a jealous, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now, if we're supposed to be for Christ, why am I over here looking at all this porn? And I'm like, oh, I want this position to be done. Oh, snap. Oh, what? They all in this type of, and I want to, you know, I want to do that. You're not becoming close to God. And the thing that we need to realize is it's not about our sex game. It's about praising Jesus' name and becoming the Proverbs 31 woman that God has told us to be. That's what it's about. Don't let anybody say, oh, your sex game, girl, you ain't never did nothing. So I don't know what you're going to do because either one, you're going to masturbate, two, you're going to look at pornography, or three, you're going to practice in order to prove something to someone else and that's a form of low self-esteem and I had low self-esteem because I've never done it and I'm feeling all low because I'm like oh my gosh my husband he's not going to be pleased with me but the question is what happens if somebody is ill and you can no longer have sex what type of wife will you be then because if the only thing you were good at was your sex game and he can have somebody that's faithful to him he can't some have someone that encourages him and support him and loves him through Christ and prays for him what type of wife are you? What is he left with? So we know we need to make sure that we are Proverbs 31 women. Now, let's go into Ephesians 5, 5. It says, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. I was on my way to hell. Oh, my way to hell looking at porn to my mom, Christian. Oh, yes, I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin, I'm a virgin, I'm a virgin. But I'm looking at pornography, which is sexually immoral on my way to hell. But I'm, I'm you know, I'm a Christian and I'm, you know, I'm a virgin and stuff like that. But you must watch what you watch. Because spirits, as I said, come into you lustful spirits coming to you and by focusing on the porn and not focusing on God your spirit is becoming weaker and your flesh is becoming stronger so it's going to be harder for you to reject sin okay now let's go into he was 13 for because God always has a cure for this. He has, he reprimands who he loves and he puts laws in place because he loves us. He created marriage for us because he knows that, you know, we would be lusting, but he put something in place for us. He loves us so much. It says, and he was 13 for let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. And he will. But you must understand that the marriage bed is undefiled. So why don't you wait till you have your husband? And, you know, and make love then because he will tell you personally. Everybody has different likes and dislikes. He will tell you what he loves. And he will love you and he will want to know what you love. So he won't divorce you because you can't do this sexual position. Because he knows that you have more value than just a sex object. He knows that. He knows that. Now we're going to go into 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, no temptation has overcome you that is not common to man. God is faithful. 
and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And do you know who that, that way of escape is? Is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Confess Jesus Christ and repent and turn away from, get closer to God. It's not just saying, oh, Jesus come into my life. It is a whole, it is, it's a lifestyle. You pick up your cross and you die daily to your flesh. Whatever your flesh, it, whatever it is, it, whether it's pornography, whether it is any type of sexual immorality, whether it's greed or pride or idolatry, whatever it is, God will lead you. Lead you. Now, in Colossians 3, 5, it says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness which is idolatry. And a lot of times we feel like, oh, idolatry is a little golden calf that people make in those other countries. No, a lot of times, we don't know. Sometimes we make people idols. Sometimes, most of the time, ourselves are idols. Sometimes we overeat and food is idols. It, it's not just a little golden statue that you feel like it is. No, it's not. A lot of times we we idolize ourselves and it's us first and we're selfish and not selfless and we're not following Christ. And this is a complete love message. And I'm telling you that I was on my way to hell and I had to rededicate my life to Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way. Is Jesus, he, he's just the only way. And I just want to say that he loves you so very much. In 1 John 1 and 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. He has all power. And it says all unrighteousness, all his blood cures all. So if if you're going through something you're like, man, it's hard for me to break. Yes, it's hard for you to break. Yes, it is. But let me tell you, Jesus Christ has you. Has you. He loves you. And this is Miss Willis Willis. I'm a motivational speaker. You can book me. Look at the email below and email and message me. I love you guys. And I'll, I can come to events churches schools anywhere i'm really open and i just want to say beautiful woman become the proverbs 31 woman become the proverbs 31 woman. try to practice being a bride to christ and and follow proverbs 31 i cannot stress that enough and also look at first corinthians 13 4 through 8 i want you to learn how to love yourself because that is really really significant because if you don't know what love is if you don't know that god loves you and then if you don't know how to love yourself how can you expect to recognize love from another man and how can you know how to reject a man when he isn't loving you and when he isn't the right person to walk with you in ministry he's trying to let you he's trying to lead you astray and to sin you need to know that a man of god will encourage you he will pray for you he will love you he will bring you closer to christ not far away from well this is miss willis willis i'm a motivational speaker again this is on virginity's value and just book me uh, i'm going to be going on tour summer 2000 13. I'm really excited about it and I love you all so very much. So message and
I just want to say I love you and Jesus loves you. And please share this video. I love you all so much. Have a great day.